Daddy's thinking again. Bit of a crazy project this week. I'm building a car and a little man to go in there. A bit different to usual, but stay tuned, see what I get up to. Something I've been interested in for uh, much of my life, and the same for a lot of uh, blokes or overgrown boys, is remote control stuff. And years ago, I built several nitro powered you know large scale remote control cars and monster trucks and things uh i sold those long ago and i have since built some um giant remote control boats cabin cruisers speed boats and like these one things uh and i've sold those too i want to get back into it and i've got a special project in mind and i'll show you what i've got This is a DHK Zombie, which is a uh, remote control monster truck, 8th scale, so it's big. And it is very fast, very, very fast. Not nitro power, this is with one of the new brushless motors. Um, so, a lot less mess, a lot less noise. Um, and you can use them uh, indoors if you've got enough space. Well, I've got something in mind for this. Uh, I wanted to build one from scratch, but there's not that many kits about to build you know, to build the entire thing. So I've bought what's called a ready to run, and I'm gonna make a new top for it. And if I can, I'm gonna try and get it done for Maker Central, if I can. The body this comes with is very good because it's very lightweight and uh, it'll take knocks and it's great if you want to be hacking this thing around and uh, doing stunts with it um, but I want to make something that looks really good and I can fit a camera in and have a bit of fun at Maker Central with so we're going to put a new body on this these bodies they're lightweight sort of I don't know polycarbonate Lexan type stuff vacuum formed and they're held on with these clips So we just unclip those, then that comes off. These are replacement mounts for these bits. I've bought spare plastic bits. And to these I've added these magnetic body shell mounts, which are readily available, especially for remote control cars. I've had to adapt them with a, an aluminium collar that I've made. So they fit these larger body posts for the bigger scale cars. But there we are, front and back, and I'm going to fit those, and then the new body will be mounted with um, magnets. If you want a quick look at the inside of the car, there's the big uh, brushless motor. I've installed an extra cooling fan. That's the ESC, electronic speed control. I've put a heavier duty metal gear servo in the front there for the steering. And uh, that's where the lithium polymer batteries sit. <clears throat> so these are the uh, wooden bits with the magnets set in. And they just lock on there like that. And they're going to be the platform on which I build the body. Then it's a case of uh, messing about with cardboard templates and seeing what fits and looks right, really. That's the front grille marked out. I'm at the next stage now. So I've cut out this front which will form part of the grill and the lights and I've used model makers ply very thin plywood to cut out the sides looks a bit like a soapbox uh, cart at the moment um, but that's it I used the cardboard templates to make these so I've made some uh, formers here for making the bonnet of the car and uh, so I'll curl some wood over here. But I'm going to dismantle it now because I need to cut out some shapes in the side for vents and exhausts and things and it'll be easier to do it while it's flat. Onto the drill press now and this is a good way of just cutting the uh, ends and corners of the holes. Well I've glued these um, bulkheads, I suppose you could call them bulkheads or struts or formers on here. I've uh, shaped it on the uh, belt sander so they're all running nice and flat and round. And uh, I'm now going to put some uh, sort of cladding over the top there, a skin. And uh, I'm going to use this very thin uh, balsa wood, I think, if it works out all right. 
up there, I'm hoping that I can do that and glue that on there like that. Here I am, gluing's complete and I'm just removing all the clamps and the baking parchment and the strips of wood all there to help hold the uh, balsa in place. I'm just trimming off a bit of the excess balsa wood. I've uh, added some bits of wood around here for strength and to enable me to uh, glue the back piece on. So I'm going to now measure this and cut out a piece of uh, model maker's plywood just to glue onto there with some epoxy resin. You can see the uh, magnetic mounts are all glued in place now, all with epoxy. I've been cutting out some more um, pieces of this thin plywood and these are going to form the uh, the cab of the vehicle. So there's the roof, there's a curve on this for the windscreen. That's going to form the back bit. And then uh, these will form the sides. So uh, it makes sort of a box. So here's where I'm up to. I've glued the cab together now, put the uh, a couple of formers in here curve the uh, windscreen bit round the uh, hood will come up here or the bonnet and come up over here uh, I've also glued several level four layers of thin um, balsa wood onto the top uh, just to make a lightweight top that I can shape to give it that rounded you know so it looks like a proper car rather than just a dead flat top on it so I can just round that top over I found some uh, carbon fibre rod that I used to uh, repair kites years ago. And I'm going to cut this into sections to glue into to glue into the corners, just to give it some strength. Uh, it'll keep it strong while I round off these edges. I'm going to sand them round. So I've put a piece across the front here because I'm going to put a grill behind that and uh, I've chamfered all this so that this fits in here and butts up against that still looking like a tractor at the minute but hopefully in the end it'll look okay the other thing I've done is I've if you can see inside there I've put the carbon fibre rods and a lot of epoxy resin then I've got carbon fibre struts at the front to support the front of the uh, windshield and wooden ones at the back because we've got a lot more bulk here for support and it means I can round this bit off a bit more there it is with the uh, edges all rounded off on the belt sander I did that just by rolling rolling the edges on the belt sander I'm now going to glue this onto the uh, onto the body so I've uh, done as much sanding as I can on the belt sander, just to round the corners off. This is all glued on now. Um, so I'm now going to switch to the Merlin 2 for doing some uh, profile sanding and just smoothing off some of these other bits. Then we can start doing a bit of filling and some fibreglassing. The Merlin 2 has become one of my favourite tools in the workshop. It's so versatile and it's a brilliant little mini sander perfect for doing the contouring on this car here we are ready for fiberglassing so it's coming on it'll look less like a tractor i think once i put the running board along the uh the rail sort of along here uh and when it's painted the lower half will be black and the rest of it will be colored above it um it'll split the body up a little bit i've just cut out some uh, 25 gram uh, glass fiber cloth um, just a couple of pieces because I want to get the uh, balsa wood covered first uh, and uh, then we'll go from there I want at least two layers on the balsa wood the rest could probably just get away with one start by mixing up some of this finishing resin which is very good for this fiber glassing and uh, I'm combing it through the glass fiber cloth just using a little bit of cardboard here and smoothing it through the cloth so it sticks down it's a mucky job 
it's one of these jobs that when it goes right it's very satisfying when it goes wrong it is awful so we're on to the last stage of fiberglassing now this has got one layer of fiberglass cloth on it and the hood or bonnet has got two layers on and uh, i've sanded it back each time to get a nice smooth edge where they overlap and i'm just now going to put the second layer over the rest of the body of the car so all this back section really i'll try and do a better job of filming the next stage but basically what i'm doing is mixing up some resin pouring it on the top and then combing it through the cloth so you're using minimal resin and you're just combing it and combing it and it'll seep through the cloth and bond onto the wood or the um, fiberglass underneath and it keeps it light but strong same process as before i'm just trying to show you a bit better here i've actually got some little bits of styrene card which i'm using as a comb this time and you can get a better view of how it becomes translucent you know it sort of disappears as the uh, resin goes through it but you just comb it so you're getting rid of all the runs and you're keeping the resin thickness to a minimum resin set now i'm just going to cut away some of this uh, excess you gotta be really careful doing this because where resin has got on the edges of these uh, fiberglass fibers and they're like little needles and they can stick in you and break off so just be uh, very careful awkward trying to do this so i can show you in the camera really but it, it cuts quite easily and then the uh, edges can be sanded just uh, making a steering wheel out of this um, aluminium ring and uh, some plywood and a little servo horn i'm going to glue all that together to form a steering wheel this is a piece of um, corian worktop and very hard plastic and uh, i'm going to cut this out and make a rear fender or rear bumper and i've um, marked out along here where i'm going to drill some holes for the led lights the indicators and reversing lights i've drilled some holes for the different size leds and uh, i've used a large countersink bit on my drill press and milled out these um, dishes which are going to form reflectors for the bulbs i'm going to try and spray this chrome if all goes to plan i'm just going to sand off the edges and round it off nicely on the lathe now and using one of my easy wood tools carbide tools here and i've got a bit of corian which i'm uh, turning to form a headlight housing or reflector i'm checking the diameters drilling out the middle which is the same diameter as the led light and uh, to use my jacobs chuck on my wood lathe and then using the jacobs chuck again a countersink, countersink bit to uh, create the reflector surface just doing a test fit looks good now i'm using some styrene tubing to create the exhaust pipes I've cut these into four lengths and i'm welding them together with some plastic weld capillary action carries this solvent between the tubes and literally welds it together sanding them off at the correct angles mounting them on another bit of plastic card which is styrene and welding that on there to form the exhaust yeah, it's all sanded and ready for spraying i'm not going to show the spraying because uh, a i'm not very good at it and it's very difficult to film without destroying my camera gear um, but i've got all the components ready there's the uh, rear fender i've made some different headlights now and uh, i've made some little um, side lights and indicator houses um, some of them i'm going to spray body colored and some will be chromed or chrome sprayed anyway but these are all made out of corian this is where i'm up to so the prime is all on there and uh, i've sprayed the inside matte black i'm now going to mask off the windows from the inside and uh, paint it blue i've done a couple of um, test strips so that's the next bit doing a bit of work on the driver now start off by making an armature uh, using some aluminium foil on a wooden dowel just getting a rough sort of head shape 
and uh, using some Fimo polymer clay or Fimo. This is the soft version. And what I'm doing is squidging a layer of this over the top of the foil. And I've got some glass eyes, doll's eyes that I picked up off eBay. I think these things are brilliant for um, polymer clay work. I'm just embedding those into the polymer clay now. And these are going to form the starting point for the face of the uh, the driver. Now he's going to be a bit of an ugly boy, this driver. And I'll start by just adding bits more of polymer clay here and there to build up things like brow ridges and cheekbones. Yeah, get in there. And his jaw now. And then you add some eyelids and I'm shaping those with some silicon tools. And these are denture teeth, acrylic denture teeth, and you can pick them up off eBay. I've set those in his jaw, making him look very ugly. He's got some ears, but now I'm pricking in all the little follicles on his head. So you can see all those little indentations, and they're going to become his sort of whiskers. Black acrylic paint. And I'm painting this into all those indentations. And then wiping it away. So it gives that sort of uh, stubble appearance, really. Not forgetting his eyebrows. Yep, he really is quite ugly, this fella. Touched in lips and eyes as well with a bit more acrylic paint. This is the steering wheel um, that I made earlier. It's all sprayed up and I'm making some hands to go on it now out of the polymer clay. I find it easier to sort of do them this technique where I cut the fingers and then mould the fingers. But there's a hands just about ready to be moulded round that steering wheel. So where are we up to? Um, well, there's the body of the uh, of the car, all sprayed up in its metallic blue, and I've put some uh, chrome trim lines on there. Uh, I'll take some better pictures at the end. Uh, it's got the light housings on it. And I don't know if you can see in there, but there's a steering servo uh, in there, all wired in. And that's uh, ready for the steering wheel. And so I had to bake the polymer clay Fimo hands on the metal wheel before gluing in the centre. Because that's wood and plastic, and I didn't want it melting in the oven. There we go. Tattoos on the knuckles, love to make. And that will be fixed inside the car and it will steer as the car steers if all goes to plan. Here's the man. See if uh, oh yeah, face recognition has found him on the camera. And there you go, I've made him some little earrings and he's got his Mohican there. His Mohawk uh, haircut. Looks a bit like a taxi driver in a way I think. But, uh, little camo top and those uh, some magnets in the end of the arms which will connect to the hands on the steering wheel but that's him he's all ready to go I've got rather a lot of wiring to do um, I've got these little headlights which are very high power LED lights they're going on the sides of the cab I've got this uh, GT power sound and light unit and uh, what that does is it'll generate all different engine sounds, whichever one you choose. I, I want some sort of big meaty V8 or something going in there. Uh, but it also has indicator lights and headlights and uh, and it all wires up between the um, receiver and the speed controller and the servos. There's rather a lot of wiring involved. So I've got to suss all that out and make sure that's all okay. So that's the next step. Um, I can't really show you much of that because it's very difficult to film and it's a bit boring and the video is already way too long. I've got a template for the front grille and I don't know whether to use some metal mesh for that or whether to create my own grille using some of the chrome detailing strip that I used uh, on the car body. Uh, I've got all the Exhaust pipes all sprayed up. They're all ready to go. 
So, and one each side. So, they'll sit like that. I made some flags. Maker's Central Jimson Stuff flags. And these are on uh, piano wire, air, you know, whip aerial type arrangements, and that's going to go on the back of the car as well. I went for um, a chrome grill in the end. Um, I've stuck that to some plastic card, uh, and I'm using this uh, self adhesive chrome trim, and I've just stuck lines and lines and lines across it. And then that slots up into there to form the grill. I think it, the chrome looks better than the mesh. I decided the uh, back of the car needed a bit of extra bling so I've uh, cut one of my skull castings that I did uh, in half and sanded the back and then I've sprayed it with this silver chrome spray paint and I've made some little uh, logo emblems out of milliput and sprayed those uh, i used my logo stamp in milliput and then sprayed those with the same paint all assembled just needs testing As he says, love to make. Here's the finished car on the turntable with the lights working just to give you a full 360 view. You can see the little emblems on there, the badges I put on and the skull on the back. And you can see the little uh, brass tubes where the flags will mount in the uh, rear fender. Uh, yeah, I'm very pleased with how that turned out, really pleased. But we're going to just uh, have to try it out, be rude not to. Thanks. Yep, I'm rubbish at driving these things, I need a lot of practice. Anyway, we're having a bit of fun here. Oops, hit the tripod. Now for a few ground level shots, which I just took on my phone. Mia thought it was hilarious. But, uh, yeah, had a bit of fun. I've also made this custom camera mount to go inside the car. I have a block of wood and milliput on the top and the uh, my little action cam will strap onto the top of that and that can go in the car to give a driver's point of view. The sound on this uh, action cam is dreadful. A really bad microphone but uh, it was a very cheap camera. The footage isn't bad though. It uh, gives a good driver's point of view and uh, the hands moving on the steering wheel work well. I was very pleased it, it achieved exactly what I wanted it to really. Very pleased with the whole build. There we go, bit different. Back soon with some more. Please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching folks, I hope you enjoyed it. As I say, a bit different to my usual stuff, but I do enjoy doing this sort of thing. So it's just a, another aspect of my making really. Just a few close-up shots. More rubbish coming soon. I'm hoping to uh, take the radio control car and the little driver to make a central next week. Depends if I can fit it in the car. I've got so much stuff to take. But I'm going to be there all day Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Helping to set up on the Friday. If you're coming, come and say hi. If you haven't got your tickets yet and you want to come, go onto the website. You can book them in advance. All the details are in the description. 
Many, many thanks to all my subscribers, and hopefully I'll get to say hi to a few of you at Makers Central.